Yeah, it's good to see live music coming back. Yeah. Okay, tell me about your albums. How many, this latest one that you're doing now, that's your sixth, is it? This is the fifth album. Fifth. And one always hopes that they get better. Uh, I'm, sure I'm very fond of the of the third one that we made, Skeletons of Memories. Oh, the one about Namibia. I love the one about you know going up the west coast. That that was a very fascinating project, and and it was wonderful to work with Madosini on a couple of songs. Okay. Uh, I'm very fond of that album still. And then these songs on this album, they're very close to my heart. I personal experience. Uh, I was. I was very I I was going through all kinds of things. I got married. My father died. I lost a a, a very very good friend. It took his life. Oh no. Um, and I wrote about that. So these songs are very, you know, they still feel raw sometimes, and I'm close to them. Okay, but I mean, isn't every song personal? I think so, and and then some are, you know, even more so. They are the, you, that one really, um, it's like, you know, all Bob Dylan's albums are personal, but you, you do have a feeling when you listen to Blood on the Tracks that, that that's an appropriate title, you know, that that really was Blood on the Tracks. You yeah, know? that was quite, yeah. Um, quite deep. Yeah. Do you write in the third person, first person or second person when you write a song? Mm, it varies um, quite a lot in the first person here. Barbara writes in the third person quite often. Like someone observing someone. Like someone something. observing someone. Or she would write it for a man to sing. Okay. So there was more distance. I think for, for, for this album... There was a lot of first person writing. Okay, for you. Yeah, and when I when I addressed, uh, I would address someone else. I would address my beloved. I would address my friend who died. Okay. Uh, and once or twice, I I I'm not quite sure who I addressed. Um, you know, something other than myself. But hey, I. One or two of those songs are mysterious to me. Okay, good. Do you play any covers or would you record covers? Play them live? I haven't really recorded covers. I mean, I sing uh, other people's songs all the time. Um, like, would you do a Dylan song? Would you do a Lake Billy song? I would, I would, I would absolutely. Uh, when it comes to recording, um, often, yeah, often yeah. you know, there are so many songs that. Uh, that I want to put on the album, and there's always the copyright issues. Yeah, and and by the time you you get to the recording phase, um, the producer saying, "Well, you know, can't you cut it down to twelve songs?" And I, I said, "Well, well, I was really, I was really hoping we we could put on eighteen, you know, because they're quite short songs, you know." And well, and, and then any sort of project to record covers, then. Um, tends to sort of fall through the cracks. Right. But at a gig, I would, you know, I would absolutely, I would, I would often choose a song by Dylan or by Leonard Cohen. Okay. Those are, I, I tend to play their songs before anyone else's, I think. Okay, nice. I, I feel a connection to Cohen because he was a poet, first and foremost. Yes, he was. He was certainly a poet first. Yes, I think he only started in music when he was twenty-one. I think maybe so. much later even. Yeah, I mean his his first album he made when he was in his thirties already. Yeah, and he was interesting because he did actually show the way one could move between those two worlds. Even though when he became famous as a musician, I think it was impossible to read his poetry in the same way and to judge it in the same way. Yeah. But he certainly did. He certainly moved um, between those worlds. And there were, you know, there were other people. I mean, I remember going to poetry um, readings when I was 18 by Chris Mann, mm -hmm. wonderful local poet who died recently. Yeah. Um, 
and he was a fine poet. And then every now and then he would, he would take out his guitar and he would have some kind of alternative tuning. Yeah. And he would sing these beautiful crafted songs. Wow. And that also showed the way that it could be done. That you didn't, you didn't have to choose between being... You can be both. You can be both. You know, like Joni Mitchell is a painter as well yeah. as a songwriter and a singer. Amazing painter. Yeah. It's uh, for people who may not have heard your music. Do you have of your music online? Yes, and not so much these latest songs, but uh, some of the music is certainly online. Under uh, Red Earth and Rust. Under Red Earth and Rust, and we still have copies of all the albums. Okay. So now I always encourage people if they like the music to go out and buy it. Yeah. But I mean, is there a Bandcamp page or? Uh, I get exactly where it's available now but some of it yes i believe is on is on bandcamp okay. and i must actually check how much of it is available that's why i say that the safest way at the moment is to is to contact us um but certainly that is something and if people contact you is that through facebook or or where yeah or email website email's good email's good okay and you is there a website as well there's a website, and uh, those emails uh, come through to me, and uh, yeah, people can email. I'm happy to, you know, give they can email me on my email address as well, and I'll give you that. Great. Okay, I think that pretty much sums up your music. Is there anything you'd like to add? Anything? No, I think that's it. Future plans. To play live again. Yeah, I can't wait to play live again. I'm sure. That feeling that there's an audience that listens is incredibly important. I don't know that you can have that experience um, online. A lot of things you can experience online. But that, that feeling of urgency of playing to people and then exchanging something, maybe, maybe an album, maybe an experience that I think is such an important part of uh, of sharing music of experiencing music I just watched recently a six part documentary on the Grateful Dead wow and Jerry Garcia said every person in the crowd is a member of the band yeah and I'll never forget that that's a, I think that's very important and when we I mean when we recorded this album we would talk about how the songs came to be written. Mm -hmm. this, you know, we would story them. Yeah. And I would say, well, and you know, and, and then my friend died, and 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 I would tell his story. Mm -hmm. um, there's a song that that uh, that references the way. Barbara and I ritualized my father's death, you know, the, the kind of ritual that we did to say uh, goodbye to him when he died. And then people who play on, on the album start sharing their experience. They start telling their stories. Great. Um, and that, I think, is, that's an important part of, that's an important part of, the, of making the music and experiencing music, having people in a room together telling stories. Right. And people relate to it and it's yes, it I makes hope it so. real. I hope I I certainly do. I can you can you can hear warmth in a record. Yeah. I hope people will will hear that in our music. You you mentioned record. Do you still do you prefer vinyl to C D or I I get into so much trouble buying CDs because there's so many that I that I want that I, I'm wary of going vinyl as well, because then I think I'll need a second and a third house. <laughs> I yeah, I know the, know the feeling. <laughs> it's, it's space is, a, is an issue. That's really the only... Um, but the ultimately, only the warmth one gets the out sound, of the vinyl that is, warmth is, is... that warmth I think is that's how music was meant to sound. Yes, I know, I'm sure that's true. I mean, with the digital, it's all fine and good, but it's it's... It's almost too polished. It's yeah, I, I I do agree. I do agree. I remember, you know, every now and then I would you know, I would 
listen to just um, you know the days when you would record a vinyl onto you know onto tape yeah and you and every now and then I I find one of those tapes and put it on and even if the record is a bit scratchy and it jumps in one or two places that warmth is astonishing it is no snaps and crackles that that it, it makes it so I don't know it makes more it real. human more real makes it no, but th something can be too perfect my singing teacher always said to me just get the sound out don't try to make it perfect because perfection is also a trap yeah. perfection is overrated <laughs> yes one last question okay I'll leave that for the poetry section okay Okay, let me see. I'll just show her this came out, but I'm sure it did. Yeah. 